De Remittance nummer 1491, nee 1492 met de uitzending van vandaag, 8 december 2018. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. This bulletin will be completely in English. This bullet, dit bulletin is geheel in het Engels. Uh, er is data en uh, dat is een leuke. Uh, er zijn diverse datamodus en die schakelen allemaal automatisch. Frequentie is 1500 hertz, maar je moet wel RXID rechtsbovenaan ingeschakeld hebben. Notabene gisteren bleek er een hinderlijk piepje in de uitzending van DMR.li te zitten. Als waarschijnlijk veroorzaakt door een niet helemaal showvolle geluidskaart die in de Raspberry Pi zat. Dank aan Bernard en ook aan Berry voor de hulp daarbij. Inmiddels is de geluidskaart vervangen en het geluid zou nu goed moeten zijn. Hallo, hallo, hallo. This is Mike Marsh, G1IAR. And welcome to the TX News podcast of the GB2RS National News for Sunday, the 9th of December 2018, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. Headline news this week watch an ISS contact next Friday. Turkey gets 60 and 6 meters, and the RSGB responds to a CEPT wireless power report. An amateur radio contact with the International Space Station, facilitated by ARIS, is planned for Friday the 14th of December. The contact with Kenilworth School is scheduled for 12.55 UTC and it will be streamed from around noon at live.aris.org. Turkey's regulator BTK, in a government gazette notice on the 29th of November, released two new amateur radio allocations. They are the new WRC 1560 metre band at 15 watts, plus an all-mode 6 metre allocation of 50 to 52 megahertz with a power limit of 75 watts. The RSGB has made a submission to the CEPT regarding its draft report on wireless power transmission for electric vehicles. This is the latest step as part of ongoing work by the RSGB and the IARU that is preparing for WRC19 next autumn. A copy of the submission can be viewed online at tinyurl.com forward slash yavpsnx6. There'll be no GB2RS script for Sunday, the 30th of December. The last news reading for 2018 will take place on Sunday, the 23rd of December, with normal service resuming on Sunday, the 6th of January. Individual newsreaders may choose to run a net instead of the news during their slot on the 30th, though this must be under their own call sign and not using GB2RS. CW Ops is accepting nominations for the Advancing the Art of CW Award in 2019. The purpose of the award is to recognise individuals, groups or organisations that have made the greatest contribution towards advancing the art or practice of radio communications by Morse code. Nominations may be made by anybody, not limited to CW Ops members either, and email nominations must go into awards at CWOps.com. Dot org that's c-w-o-p-s or one word dot org and send a cc copy along to secretary at cwops.org as well nominations must be received by the 1st of march 2019 and all the details are online and viewable at cwops.org Youngsters on the Air Month, or Yota, runs throughout December, of course, and the next club to activate the GB18 Yota call sign will be Southampton University Wireless Society on the 12th. Durham and District ARS get their go on the 14th, and then the RSGB's National Radio Centre will be operating the station on the 15th and the 16th. Young people are welcome at the NRC, where they'll have the opportunity to experience amateur radio using the -the state-of-the-art GB2RS station at the National Radio Centre. If you hear these stations and others around the world taking part in Yota Month, give them a shout, and please take time to make a contact with these young people. 
The RSGB is still taking bookings for the Introduction to Amateur Radio workshops, running in association with Bletchley Park on the 15th and the 16th of December. Now, the workshops will give an introductory insight into the world of amateur radio, as well as the chance to see the RSGB's National Radio Centre. So, spread the word to any friends, family members and colleagues who might be interested in finding out more about our amazing hobby. Full details, including booking and information prices, are all up online at tinyurl.com forward slash YA7EXJVA. The GB3LEX 10 gigahertz beacon was switched off at 1450 UTC on the 29th of November. Now, this was to enable investigations to identify the cause of a fault reported by a local user. Details of its switch back on will be announced when more is known of the fault. The RSGB has released a video of the Yota 2018 event held between the 8th and the 15th of August in South Africa. The event welcomed 74 young radio amateurs from all over the world, including participants from seven African countries. The video, filmed and edited by Peter Barnes, Mike Zero, Sierra Whiskey November, shows the highlights of the event and accompanies the official blog, which is up at rsgb.org slash yota. 2018. Worked All Postcodes is an award scheme announced by the radio dealer Moonraker. Participants need to work as many postcodes as possible using a maximum of 10 watts on any mode on the 70, 144, 430 and 1296 MHz bands. Wednesday will be activity night and awards will be available for different numbers of postcodes. This all starts on the 2nd of January 2019, so something to look forward to for next year and keep an eye on the Moonraker blog for more information. So that is your headline news for the week. Now it's time for details of rallies and events for the upcoming week. Members of the British Vintage Wireless Society are holding a swap meet and an auction on Sunday, the 9th of December, at Royal Wooden Bassett Memorial Hall in Royal Wooden Bassett, which is in Swindon in Wiltshire, and the postcode Sierra November 4, 8 Echo November. Doors open at 10 in the morning and the auction starts around 1pm. More details of the BVWS membership can be found up on their webpage at bvws.org.uk. Now, we got no rallies in the diary for the weekend of the 15th and the 16th of December, probably because everybody's out panic buying and Christmas shopping. But don't forget to get your event into Radcom and into GB2RS. Get those details sent in to us as early as possible to radcom at rsgb.org.uk. And we do need to know at least three to four months in advance to get your information printed into Radcom. Now onto the DX News from 425 DX News and other sources. Caesar, Victor Echo 3, Lima Yankee Charlie and Adrian, Kilo Oscar 8, Sierra Charlie Alpha are scheduled to operate as Tango X-Ray Zero Mike from a new IOTA which is on the Moraine Atoll and it's Oscar Charlie 297 until the 10th of December. They'll then change to Tango X-Ray Zero Alpha from Maria Estad Atoll, which is Oscar Charlie 113, from the 12th to the 16th of December. Tom, November 9, Echo Alpha Whiskey will be active, holiday styly, as Hotel Quebec 9 Tango from Roatan Island, which is November Alpha 057 in Honduras, until the 18th of December. He will be operating SSB and slow CW on the HF bands, and if you get a contact, QSL direct to November 9, Echo Alpha Whiskey. And finally, Ben, Delta Lima 6, Romeo Alpha India, is on the air as Papa 4, stroke Delta Lima 6, Romeo Alpha India, until the 27th of December. Activities holiday style on the low bands, with some activity in various contests. And you can QSL via Logbook of the World. On to the special events news now. We've got a number of Yota stations to give a shout to. Four Oscar 18 Yota is on the air from Montenegro during December for youngsters on the air. QSL via OQRS. Also, Echo 71 Yota is operating during December 
4 Yota from Bosnia Herzegovina and Echo Sierra 9 Yota is in Estonia and it's another station that will get young people on the amateur bands for Yota. You can QSL to all of them via OQRS. Also and finally in the Yota group, members of the Ethiopian Amateur Radio Society are QRV as Echo Tango 3 Yota during December, also as part of Yota Month and you can QSL via November 2 Oscar Oscar. Special event station Charlie 4 Xmas is on the air from Cyprus during the festive season. Activity will be on the 160 to 6 metre bands using CW, SSB and various digital modes. And you can QSL via India Zulu 4 Alpha Mike Sierra. Now, if you've got any special event details, make sure you get them into radcom at rsgb.org.uk as early as you possibly can. You will get yourself free publicity on GB2RS and also in Radcom and online. And just a little reminder that you should be aware of UK special event stations must be open to the general public. So our free publicity can actually help make your efforts more widely known. Moving on to the contest news now, it's the UK 6 metre group Winter Marathon and it began actually on the 1st of December but it runs right the way through until the end of January. There's no specific operating periods, basically just work as many locator squares as you can, when you can, using any mode on the 50 MHz band. The ARRL 10 metre contest ends its 48-hour run on Sunday at 23.59, that's on the 9th, using CW and SSB. The exchange is signal report and serial number, with American and Canadian stations sending their state or their province code. On Tuesday, the 432 MHz FM activity contest runs from 1900 to 2000 UTC using FM only. It's immediately followed by the all mode 432 MHz UK activity contest from 2000 to 2230 UTC. The exchange for both contests is signal report, serial number, and locator. Next Thursday, it's the 50 MHz FM Activity Contest. It runs from 1900 to 2000 UTC using FM only, and it's immediately followed by the All Mode 50 MHz UK Activity Contest from 2000 to 2230. The exchange for both of those contests is signal report, serial number, and locator. And the second MGM contest on the 6 and 2 metre bands takes place next weekend, that's the 15th and the 16th of December, starts at 1400 UTC and it runs for 24 hours. It's the second in the series of this brand new concept contest dedicated to MGM modes. The first leg in April was well received all over Europe and the now popular FT8, MSK144 and FSK441 and other MGM modes are now allowed in this contest with the emphasis on DX and with multipliers for each new four-character locator square. The exchange is signal report and your four-character locator. And if you'd like some more information on all of this, check out the webpage at rsgbcc.org slash VHF, and you'll get more information up there. Finally, in the main news, it is now time for the Radio Propagation Report compiled this week by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 7th of December. We had a new Sunspot group, Region 2729, appear this week, although it is a member of the weakening Solar Cycle 24. The region formed fairly quickly in the Sun's southwest quadrant and at the time of writing was producing only very minor B-class solar flares. It's unlikely to do too much for the solar flux index though, which was at 70 on Friday morning. The Independent newspaper reported that the Northern Lights might be seen in the UK on Wednesday the 5th, but this proved to be slightly over-optimistic. Meanwhile, the Daily Express said the Earth could be plunged into darkness, with the solar wind having the power to affect satellites, knocking out GPS navigation, mobile phone signals... Ah, and satellite TV. Maybe they were right. The reality is, though, that the large solar coronal hole may cause the K-index to rise, but the effects were more likely to be felt late on Friday the 7th and at the weekend. Next week, NOAA has the K-index pegged at 2, thanks to a lack of coronal holes, and a solar flux index at 68. We would like to reiterate that this is a good season for low-band propagation, though, with 160 and 80 metres coming into their own right 
right now. Even 40 metres can be open to longer distances, even before sunset. So do keep an eye on the lower bands. What about the higher bands, though? Well, here is your VHF and upwards propagation news. The SHL-2 satellite launch went well, and the bird is slowly making its move to its final geostationary slot at 26 degrees east. Stations are already reporting reception of the commercial beacons with amateur equipment, so check social media and the AMSAT site for details and swing that satellite dish around if you've got one. The night of Thursday the 13th and the morning of Friday the 14th of December sees one of the largest meteor showers of the year. Welcome the Geminids. With a zenith hourly rate of around 120, the shower can give excellent meteor scatter reflections on the low VHF bands up to 144 MHz and for EME class stations even on 432 MHz. 144 MHz stations with a small Yagi and a quiet site should be able to work plenty of stations using the NSK144 Digi mode. The weekend starting this period off will have windy and unsettled weather, so there may be no tropo around. Active systems like these may provide a few heavy showers to add rain scatter to the propagation on offer, and the glimmer of hope with next week is likely to be the appearance of a weak ridge of high pressure until midweek. The second half appears to be a slide back into low pressure weather, especially in the northwest of Britain, although high pressure remains just to the east. This may allow paths across the North Sea for a few more days but none of these indicative weather types look to be really standout affairs meanwhile the moon is at minimum declination on sunday and it reaches apogee this wednesday so concentrate on meteor scatter rather than short moon windows and high losses that will characterize this week on eme and that's all from your propagation team for another week and that's all we've got for your gb2rs national news for the uk from around the world this week don't forget your regional gb2rs news broadcasters will be on the air on sunday with all the very important news closer to home and i'm just being handed a sheet of paper right here there's breaking news the breaking news is tx factor episode 22 is now on the air and it's available for you to view this weekend in the brand new show we get a sneak peek on the yet to be released yesu ft dx 101 hybrid transceiver and bob mccready takes a little in-depth look at the icom icr 8600 receiver as well as questioning what on earth network radio is all about pete sipple heads off to the 2018 rsgb convention and there's a chance to win some exciting prizes in our brand new free to enter draw it'll be like all of your christmases have just come along at once make sure you tune in over the weekend and enjoy the brand new episode of tx factor which is on the air now i'm mike marsh g1 iar reporting with the tx news weekly podcast of gb2rs thanks for listening and we'll see you right back here next week with the very latest update on gb2rs news Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.p0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl.
Amiga, fauna, retua.